as we cover many an insane movie and numerous cult TV phenomena. Are you ready to get jacked up? Are you with us? Then listen on. Ourselves or wait for reinforcements. Call for backup. We're gonna be here for a while. I don't. I don't speak Hungarian. Yeah, me either. FBI. New York Children's Hospital just got hit with a cyber attack. Find the motive. Use it to track the hacker down. Somebody from the bureau got her killed. There's a fox in the hen house. National child abduction. We're moving in with you. Everybody down! Let's dig in, people. Let's go. So, welcome back, ladies and gents. I got another special guest here. Janelle is part of the Dick Wolf Universe fandom here, and she's going to help us sort out uh, the FBI trilogy. <laughs> yeah. Hello, thanks for having me. Anytime. Yeah, no, uh, this is, I've been looking so much forward to this show, just with how it just, much like the Chicago shows, just show just the, increasingly you know easily irritable and office politics and everything and all the law and orders showing just very hard to prosecute crimes you know this show just showcases uh just all kinds of espionage and even just other thing resorted to you know a string of just career criminals uh computer hackings and even uh you know white supremacist terrorists you know <laughs> yeah 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 i love i love i love all the shows like it's incredible like all of them oh yeah it's a great marathon each time um so as we speak uh fbi is in its fourth season the yes, first spinoff is. most wanted is in season three and international has just premiered in its first season this year yeah. so uh yeah. so what what got you into a lot of these dick wolf productions was it just kind of their uh captivating mystery or just their edginess or just the characterization uh what was it that made you say i'm going to tune in each week and set my uh recorder <laughs> okay well well i guess from i was younger i was always into um crime shows i mean svu is going on what 22 years yeah, so yeah. I grew up watching, I grew up watching Law and Order. And I might say, I only watch SVU. <laughs> I haven't watched Criminal Intent or the original Law and Order. Um, I just it was the most often SVU. syndicated, to be fair. So, you know. Yes, 
It's kind I of like with Star Trek, where we talked about those who had seen the original 60s one versus the, you know, next generation in Deep Space Nine, you know, so. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I'm, I don't watch that, but yeah, I get you. I get you, but okay. so I always grew up watching um, SVU, Without a Trace, CSI, and all those nice. shows. Like, I watch, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm into those. Like, I will sit and watch all of those Criminal Minds and Ooh. stuff. Okay. Yeah. A lot of the current stuff. Nice. Um, so, yeah, no, uh, I, I do. I think that's a good counterpoint because I, I do feel like the main FBI show is kind of trying to be kind of like 24, kind of, you know, race against time, diffusing a bunch of bombs, kind of diehard free or speed style. <laughs> and yes, yes, most wanted kind of takes a criminal minds approach where they are always trying to you know play cat and mouse with just serial bank robbers or arsonists and yeah. international is kind of interesting uh because it's kind it kind of takes a taken kind of approach where you know they're just always trying to stop just everyday kidnappers yeah um, but they yeah, go a yeah. step further because, I mean, Criminal Minds did try that, and it just wasn't very successful with either audiences or critics because they just kind of felt like it was just not well-written. <laughs> yes, but the, um, the Criminal Minds, what, um, Behind the Borders? Yeah. Yeah, I think it only got, what, three seasons? It, it, it got two seasons, but two it was kind of dead on, on arrival. But it is yeah. interesting how Elena de la Garza was on Law & Order, then she was on that Criminal Minds show, and then she came <laughs> here to... Most wanted. Oh my gosh, yes. We love her. We love her as Isabel. She's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I, I do have... So, yeah, let, let's start with the casting. Uh, I had seen... So, Zico Zaki uh, plays OA. He's the Middle Eastern American agent. Yes. And yes, I, he's been on so many movies and shows, like as a guest star. And I, I remembered he played a terrorist on the last season they did at 24, and the, like three episodes or something like that he was like manning a drone or something um he just has a very distinct look to him that just you're like i trust you whatever you're gonna say i trust you dude <laughs> and yeah yeah but unfortunately i've only seen him in fbi i know he's in other shows but i've only seen him in fbi well and that, this is the fun too like I, I was watching a bunch of shows like Rizzoli and Isles and catching up on NCIS so I saw plenty of people who are now on shows like this before they were yes. famous yes. <laughs> and it's oh always fun doing that just like oh that guy playing that yes, kind of character yeah I, I like Rizzoli and Isles that was a really good show too oh totally and these guys all got a good rapport it never kind of really even becomes a buddy show so much as a just kind of a professional working relationship with all of them i had seen missy Peregrine, who plays uh maggie and plenty of other things and yeah, yeah. like stick it was one it oh was like my kind God. Of a it, yes i think <laughs> everybody supposed to know maggie from stick it i mean come on yeah, yeah who would have guessed know. but yeah i i guess because she was on that rookie blue show and uh a few other Canadian productions, like Reaper was one that was kind of popular for a few minutes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I watched Rookie Blue twice because I have to, because, I mean, come on, you have to. I feel like watching it over again because <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, yeah, totally. And so, yeah, I, I think she had a pretty cool TV resume already ahead of her, and she definitely just started on an SVU episode. Uh, yes. That's the reason that the reason um that episode where she um I, I don't remember the episode but Dico says that that was her performance why he wanted her to be the in um FBI yeah her yeah her performance oh, I'm sure. in that um SVU episode okay nice so you work for yeah. the Dick Wolf camp they'll invite you back sooner or later um so. Uh, just talking about the themes, uh, it really doesn't have any connection to Chicago other than using a similar kind of style that they're using now. You shoot fast yeah. and quick. Um, Haley Upton from Chicago PD did show up on an FBI episode briefly, but that was yes, the, the that was crazy. We like that. We we the FBI fan fan. We we like her. I mean, I could I would I would love to see her again. To be honest, maybe. I mean, 
if she and Void don't break the law at the end of this <laughs> oh ninth my God. season of Chicago. I don't know how that's going to happen, though. Missy said that it's going to be difficult to have a crossover with, you know, the shows because, you know, one CBS show is on NBC. CBS and one is on um, NBC. It's going to be It is really weird difficult. because, so, yeah, because yeah, it's like they're both owned by the same production company, but yet because they're a different distributor. I, I, I think mean, that's just they it. could always do it again, like have Marishka come over on FBI. That would be cool. Or I know he um, teased it when it first came out. He's like, you might see Benson walk across the screen briefly. But <laughs> oh my god! Or have Oe go on um, organized drive. It's 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 just okay. Imagine a scene with Oe and Stabler. Come on, that would be something. Oh, totally because. He was working for an international task force. Is like the next step up would totally be working for the FBI for Stabler. But yeah, yeah. and it it would also just be funny to see I don't know Munch or Finn or Rollins. Oh my god! It, or even, the possibilities or are yet. Yet. a lot of things can happen. But oh totally. Carisi's now working was a cop and now he's working as a as an attorney. Yeah. He could give him a subpoena for some international campaign and say, oh my God, I need you to crazy. testify in court against this man who bombed a court building or something. You know? Right, right. And Barb is coming back. Oh my God, I'm excited for that. Yes. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Yes, he's coming back. Because it was so much fun even seeing on SV Special Victims Unit did that like 500th episode or something like that and they brought back uh, uh, Danny Um, Pino Zamaro and Captain Cragen. um, Captain Cragen, yeah. And uh, what's her name? The the medic, Turner. That was cool. Yeah, Tamara Tooney. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel like since half these guys have been in that franchise, how do you feel about their roles here because i mean jeremy cisco you know he was already great on law and order uh how do you think this role compares here as the assistant fbi director valentine okay so i love jeremy cisco's character i mean i love every single character the main characters on on fbi i i didn't watch um the law and order with him and alana so I have no idea his, how, how his character was. Yeah, that was that pretty much our intro. Elena was a attorney to Sam Waterston's uh, Jack McCoy, and he was, yeah, one of the detectives with yeah. Anthony Anderson. Uh, but yeah, I, I think he's coming to his own right in the role, and uh-huh. especially with what they've done recently, where they have him, they've introduced more about his family life, they've done more giving him more to do than just shout orders and make difficult calls. <laughs> yes, yes. I like Juba. I love how he runs the job. I mean, yeah. He makes everyone him. feel confident and yet answer for their actions. You, I like how the show shows difficult to prosecute stuff and less of the, you know, people running around disobeying orders. They, they actually get reprimanded if they do something wrong. Um, yeah, I mean, they have to pack all of that within 42 minutes. Or so, so yeah, it, it goes by like <laughs> really quick, yeah. So, but sometimes you like you really want you wanted to see more happening, but you can't because you know it's just forty two minutes. So, mm-hmm. I mean, they did they, they do the, what they can do. Oh, totally. And it, I, I like how they're giving all the texts and uh, computer yeah. guys more to do. Sometimes yeah. transfer yeah, and be and up and in the field. And have, yeah, I love I love all the others. Yeah, uh, that was interesting. Um, the new gal they got on here, this uh, one African American gal who used to be a cop, who's now a oh, FBI. Tiffany, oh my God, Tiffany Wallace! Oh my God, I love her. I love her dynamic. She came in strong, like really strong. I love it. She apparently had a huge like Broadway resume, and this is like one yeah, of her first yeah. big TV and, things. Um, she went to Juilliard, I think. I think so. Uh, yeah. Uh, either way, Dick Wolf is loyal to New York, so he helps out anyone on Broadway. He's like, but yeah, Catherine Renee Turner is her name, and yeah, uh, yeah. Agent Wallace. Um, yeah, I, I looked at other stuff she had done. She had really just kind of just done experimental short films and like web series here and there. So, yeah, I'm 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 really looking forward to know more about her background. And, oh, totally. Yeah. yeah, she's a feisty one. I like it. I mean, she punched her lieutenant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes. Um, yeah, she's a tasty one. And Valentine, 
Oh, totally. And Valentine's got an unusual dilemma where he's with Kathleen Monroe's gal from DC. He's got in a romantic relationship with her and it's she's kind of, yeah. she's playing off his politics with uh -huh. the FBI director that Elena de la Garza plays. Uh -huh. Her name is Isabel Castillo. And, yeah. but I, I really dug how, uh, I really feel like Elena de la Garza really grew as an actress, especially here by this time. You know, she's already done Law and Order and the CSIs, but here, you know, she flat out got to be very more emotional and uh, she's having to be even more considerate because she could get fired if the Bureau doesn't agree with how she handles every case. And I like yeah. how she eventually every once in a while has to say, you know, you must accept this case, step down, you know, and you will not disobey my order. Otherwise, you'll get fired and then I'll probably get fired. <laughs> I mean, yes, I mean, come on. And she's like, she's, I mean, she was willing to give up her job in the season three finale. I mean, because when um, the analyst Elise had the... Yeah, she was going after the big uh, rampant cartel yeah. guy. And... She was willing. She was all in. She was willing. She was risking her life in that episode. Yeah, and she's really good at just kind of cutting through red tape as well as just telling other people, do not BS me. You know, I do this on a daily basis, so... I know what the talk actually means, so don't poo poo me, you know, when yeah, I say and this. She's not, she's not afraid to like say something. I mean, she was rough with Jurubo, she's rough with OA, I mean, she was rough with Tiffany, and she was rough with um, Scola. I think the only person she hasn't been rough with is uh, Maggie. Yeah, so she, she's gone along with a few uh, uh, different incidents, but I do remember she used to be hard on it. She seems to be okay with Maggie, but yeah, she did have to reprimand Turner a few times when she got involved in a personal case that yeah. conflicted with a cousin. But and she she's constantly pretty much telling OA, you will serve this subpoena or do this kind of thing. And he's like, Well, that's not what I signed up for. He's like, Well, the bureau's right, gonna yeah. go with it, so you have to go with this. I don't wanna be the bearer of bad news. So again, I'm your boss, so you definitely can't shoot the messenger on this one. Uh yeah, but it was an interesting episode. change. Because, I mean, we had CeeLo Ward, you know, from The Fugitive and uh, CSI New York as the main mm -hmm. director in season one. And then they, they just had her take off. And I, I don't know if the actress just wasn't digging the role or... Um, well, she, she had... Well, in the show, she retired. I actually love... I love, I love her as the, um, as the boss. She was gentle. I, I missed her. Yes, I missed her. Like, I really miss her. I mean, I mean and, and then I, I, and then you cannot compare Isabel with Dana. You just can't. No, Isabel just. Long. I, I don't know. <laughs> you cannot about... choose. Like you, you simply cannot choose which is better. No, you cannot do that because they're both awesome. They were apples awesome and oranges. Yeah. Um. And I, I saw some people complain about the acting, but it seems like they were just complaining about the first few episodes in each series, where all the actors are just getting comfortable. You know getting in the character and yeah people kind of forget when you sell a pilot nothing is going to be 100 percent. there's going to be some unfinished computer graphics there's going to be a few rush scenes maybe a predictable story you know you don't know <laughs> you're trying to get everyone's attention before you get right. picked up yeah. and then when you get picked up then you can you know go back to the drawing board and see yeah. what things are yeah. working yeah. i think well, they I knew think what they wanted they just they had to rush because that's what they often do. I remember Jerry Orbach used to joke, you know, you get two takes and that's it on these shows. So mm -hmm. I think that is a lot of the things. You get like two to five takes for extra coverage and that's it. You know, there is no Going constant back. repeating. Oh, okay, okay. But I think I felt in the show, I fell in love with the show. I think the third, probably fourth episode. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, I was addicted to it and it helped that they had like two episodes at a time back to back, but there was also moments where it's just like, okay, but now yeah, by episode three or four, now I'm comfortable and yeah. at times I kind of am even more reminded of earlier Law and Order crossed over shows, kinda like uh In Plain Sight and Homicide, which they did crossovers with. And some when you get to most wanted, I mean, I think that's a good segue here. I uh, so I was already a fan of Julian McMahon, but he kind of vanished for a while, did a, like a few other things in like, I think Australia, which is where, where he's from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, I'm not, um, I think he was in, I know he's in other shows, I think Charmed. I'm yeah, sure. Charmed, yeah. Uh, Nip Talk, but 
Uh, what's funny is I remember seeing parts of Profiler, which was like his first big break into TV fandom. And so it was interesting seeing him in, once again, another federal agent role. But he yeah. wasn't playing a alcohol, tobacco, firearm agent, you know, an ATF guy. He, instead, he's playing a federal agent who's just used to profiling, you know, just deadly felons who, you know, got a death wish on him. And Oh, wow. I'm not, I'm not familiar, familiar with that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but I'm just contrasting it here with this role, you know, with yeah. Most Wanted, because, you know, I kind of got, did you get kind of Stabler from SVU vibes from him, kind of? Um, not quite. I mean, the, 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 the He's a different cool character, are, but I'm just. They're still building Jess. I mean, we know that he, um, he has a daughter and he, his wife passed, but we don't see quite much as stable i mean we know stable for what 23 years yes yeah, stabler so was always closed out from his stabler. family with, yeah. with um just now i mean there's still a lot to learn with each with every character on each show yeah there's for those that don't know so many. julian plays but, just like crocs and uh it is interesting yeah but like you say how he had that sharpshooter on his team who was like a family friend they had like oh his daughter's like half native american and yeah him having to reconcile with his father who had been like in some kind of service but not there most of his life so oh clinton 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 sky was his um his brother-in-law it was his that's what it was brother. yeah 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 and, and then he, he left the show yeah i i don't know if the actor had a schedule conflict but a lot of these guys i don't know if they want to challenge themselves or they get called to do another role that interferes, but they always leave the door open. Uh, I yeah. yeah, even though with Kid and Lux, I was surprised. I was so sad after the premiere, like after the show ended, he posted saying like he's he's gonna exit the show for you know personal personal reasons and stuff. So, yeah. I mean, oh yeah, Kellen Lutz. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, he played uh, Agent Crosby, and Crosby. yeah, I, th I think he said he wanted to spend some more time with his, with his family, kids, and and I'm sure he'll come back. But it, they did, they gave him a good exit, to be fair, where he gets injured in the line of duty, and yeah, I, mean, I, I dug Ortiz, I dug uh, Keisha Cashley Hughes, uh, Hacker uh, Gibson, yeah, yeah, Roxy Sternberg's good as Barnes, uh, but yes, Barnesy, I can't, I can't, I, can't, I call her Barnesy after. Jess said it in the one episode. He called her Barnsley. <laughs> call her Barnsley after that. Like, oh, it's good. strictly Barnsley for me right now. Whatever works. Um, were you familiar with Alexa Davalos as uh, Special Agent Gaines' character? No, actually, it's the first. Um, um, I like her character. Yeah, I love I She's love been in character. so many things. Defiance, Chronicles of Riddick, um, mm -hmm. The Mist, and no. uh, Pancho no. Villa with Antonio Banderas and this was an interesting role for her because, yeah, she's like a f special agent for the FBI, and really? she was but basically. I heard, that, I heard that her husband is, um, I forgot his name, but he played um, in Criminal Minds. Will? Oh, really? Joshua Stewart, I think. Let me look. I think that's her husband. I yes, Josh Stewart, you're right. Josh I had no Stewart. idea. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Alfie, I, I'm familiar with her husband because he was in Criminal Minds. There you go. And he did a movie with his co-star, AJ Cook, um, in Backcountry, I think. Oh, that's think right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. A lot of those Criminal Minds actors have been in movies together. But yeah. Yeah. No yeah, good but catch. I don't know. I don't I don't know much about um Alexa. No. Yeah. She's but this I beautiful love French actress who's played all kind of uh, roles. Um uh but and like you say, I think it was interesting for her how they brought her on because yeah, you don't she know if she has her own it. agenda. Or... She just saved me. Like, she literally just saved your life because in the in the premiere episode of Most Wanted, she like, she um I think she shot one of the suspects. Yes, yeah, and she camera, almost got right? shot, but she saw yeah. him brandishing a gun and he was the sneaky kind as opposed to the, you know, nothing to lose kind. Yeah, she came in with a high. I mean, I love her because she saved the team. <laughs> And she, I mean, her character is so calming. Like, the way she talks, I mean, she's so calming. I saw some complaining about how she speaks, and I'm like, how can you not hear what she speaks? She's very <laughs> reserved, and that's what I would buy any federal agent, you know, to kind of be like. But, yeah, the characterizations are very interesting on these shows, and 
it seems like those who complain just seem to just I don't know they weren't going to be impressed by any of it regardless so it's just like what what do you think a federal agent sounds like you know I think of them yeah. as something more than just a cop so <laughs> I mean come on <laughs> but yeah I love I love all their characters yeah and Hannah oh my god Hannah is like she's so funny I think Hannah is like really funny yeah, I mean, Keisha Cashel Hughes, you know, she'd always been busy on some new Australian uh, movie and uh-huh. New Zealand, I think, actually, my bad. Um, but it was interesting yeah. how, yeah, with her, I think she really grew to like this role because she's like, I'm doing all kinds of computer hacking. I'm, you know, finding um, Photoshopped IDs. Yeah, and I, um, her her episode where she had a stalk, I mean, oh. That was really cool because it's just like yeah. it can backfire on anyone. They can get mm-hmm. you out of a van when you're coming out of the building. Even it was it was kind of creepy. <laughs> that, that that was that was kind of creepy to know that she had a stalker. That yeah. Totally. Um, and I do like how they show the supremacists, and it seems like some of the guys complaining. I've seen some real Nazi worthy comments on social media. It's like, uh, so what do you think is the common theme guys? It's going to often be someone who's smuggling in weapons for an NRA gun nut or, you know, for, for which one? Oh, just for any of these shows, you know, it's like, it's more likely going to be a white supremacist. We've been showing it in media for years and it has been a growing issue. And, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it has, it has. But with um, with most wanted, they're they're very brutal on that show. I mean, I think it's yeah. like it's the one of the most brutal um, big wolf show there is. I mean, they're crazy. Bodies be dropping like flies over in that show. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially, oh man, they had someone who was like from the gen. I liked how they fictionalized this. Who was like from a January six riot who gets in an intense shootout with them, and we're talking. Yeah. We're talking yeah, so, heat or den of thieves worthy shootouts. That was intense, but I was like, I can see that. There's plenty of people from that who Yeah, I like how they, they, they rip things out of the headline and just put it in the show. Oh, totally. And I mean <laughs> it's crazy. Sometimes like I mean if I'm especially with SVU, I'm watching the episode I'm, I'm, and I was like, But this seems so familiar, like I've heard it, you know. Yeah, like, they say like, it. Oh yeah. yes, it was in the news yesterday. I mean it could mm-hmm. be in the news yesterday and then they have they read they write it on the show the oh totally the and after. there's plenty of pre me too movement stuff you know on some of these but i mean uh, on all these shows but i mean we saw how you know cops were reacting unprofessionally to black lives matter incidents and we saw uh mm-hmm. how uh i i liked how they i mean with the newest law and order organized crime, they did a good job of even having it be where some criminals were smuggling in bootleg COVID-19 supplies. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. Yes. So oh, it's like all, all this stuff is made, you know, telling of the times and just showing that, you know, I could see someone having to deal with that. Would it probably end in 40 minutes, you know, let alone mm-hmm. one episode, probably not, but Hey, you know, yeah. You know what to suspend belief on, and uh, I feel like they do a good job of at least keeping them contained, you know, yeah. <laughs> not, not going I mean, they, such they, 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 they have to do what they can to do it. They have to do right? Yeah, <laughs> as good as the subpoena does, and it makes for rewarding entertainment still. Um, uh, so let's go to international. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I did not know how this was going to play out, and they kept it very quiet on who was going to be the leads and yeah so for so it's um scott forrester he, luke i cannot i will not pronounce his last name i don't want to butcher his last name so i guess he's the yeah fun fact role. dick wolf did a similar show with the lovely french actor uh jean reno called joe that was kind of similar to this so it was interesting uh-huh. seeing him kind of do a similar kind of thing like this where it's like we're showing you know european savvy agents and uh-huh. uh, i'll tell you some of those kidnapping cases have been very brutal like 
we saw saw like a five year old. I don't know how they got that performance. Made it look like oh, he wow. was fainting. You know. Oh wow. So <laughs> yeah, definitely even more brutal on here. They don't really go into like sex crimes or anything. They no. mainly just go into people faking passports, extorting stuff overseas. You know. Yeah, but I think the episode last night it was based on some pornography thing. Yeah, I was. I couldn't. I couldn't. Um, I think I was a little bit um, distracted mm-hmm. from watching FBI, the um, FBI episode because of what happened in the last scene. So I had um, I have to watch over international because I missed some things in that episode. Yeah, they did a good job of leading it all up, where they were going after the guy from the Mummy, Odin Far, as a ruthless businessman. <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah. They do a good job on some other production aspects. I'm not always impressed by some CGI, but for the most part, it's pretty slam bang. It's a mix of both, where the explosion might be, you know, CGI fire, but the yeah. debris falling over people is real. <laughs> yeah, some yeah, some of them are real. Some some of the green screen are ridiculous. <laughs> if you ask me, it's crazy. The guy falling to his desk was not 100, percent but fortunately, it lasted only five seconds. So, yeah. Different budget, guys, for TV. Um, overall, though, they do a good job of using it, making it still look like something you could see on a big screen and you wouldn't yes. accept. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they, they did their best. Totally. And uh, what do you think will be next for this franchise? I mean, I can't see them doing another spinoff. I, I think they're good for now. Uh, that but, would be crazy. <laughs> yeah, that, it would just be too much. But. That would be crazy. I mean, it would have. They would have to wait until when international reach probably season five mm-hmm. or something like that. So I don't know. I don't. I think it's good <laughs> for now. Plus, yeah. if they do that, people won't have a social life. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, you can. Uh, one of them's gonna have to end first before you do just another one, and. And I cannot see anyone. I don't want none of them to end as yet. I want right. them to be like, well, especially FBI. I want it to be the next SVU reaching like 23 seasons. Maybe. I mean, especially Most Wanted. Because, uh, I mean, because uh, they really did make, keep it so simple and just beautiful, like with just how, I mean, yeah, they're talking most about wanted. even deeper issues, like people messing with private property and reservations just really heated stuff yeah. that does need to be talked about and yet yeah um most wanted going more depth and they're more family wise i think well I've i do like, feel and click as a family that's true because it's like for a while yeah the main fbi was kind of the maggie and oa show and then when they finally brought on the other guys like oh what's his name great actor well maybe not great um, but Johnny yeah, John yeah. Boyd's character. I, yeah. Don't you find it so funny how he came from being on Bones. the eights? Well, yeah, Bones as an FBI agent who was being mentored. But even before that, he was like a computer tech who worked at the counter-terrorist unit on 24, eighth season, which was set in New York. So there you go. There's oh, no, I, I didn't know about that. It's so I funny. Like, but but when he came on screen, you know, in his first episode uh, as Agent uh, Scola, I was, yeah, I totally was sold. Cool. I loved how he had just the, not to be personal, yeah. I don't know how to express it, but you can count on me. And he had yeah. kind of that, I'm making, the, I'm butchering it, but I liked how he kind of had that reserved old school appeal. And yet the actor just did such a good job of just showing, he's like, I care about you. I, yeah. I, but again, because I'm so, I've been a reserved, you know, brainwashed a certain way. I, 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 yeah. I just can't express it, but. I got Stuart you. is awesome. I love, I love, like I said, I love all the characters. And I actually miss Christian so much. Totally. And much like Law and Order, they do a good job of like, especially with Criminal Intent and later SVU seasons, I like how they essentially will have them, they'll switch them around. Like, uh-huh. we're doing a case together tonight while the other guy, you know, is in okay. sick leave or uh, finding themselves or doing some other personal thing, taking time off or... Yeah. Or they're or they're doing a computer hacking thing that's again requires extra hands on deck so they can arrest those guys. But mm-hmm. but I think FBI is slowly not being a Maggie and OA show anymore because you know 
they incorporate, you know, they they have Stewart. It was interesting how and, he was supervising the international team, and then he was having to decide, does he want to keep doing this? And he had to basically give up his current girlfriend. He's like, sorry, I'm married to the job. You know, right. I cannot yeah, give was, it up. Oh my god, that was. I don't crazy. trust anyone else or anything else. It's nothing personal. Yeah. And he's tried to save so many members of his Middle Eastern community at times, even too. And I think that's really just kind of the main core of the uh, issues that he has to deal with. He's like, who can I find and actually save who's not going to be sent to probably a, you know, yeah. a prison that they send all terrorists to? Yeah, or, he, he tried to um, compartmentalize, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> sometimes it doesn't. Uh, totally. And uh, they've done a good job of evolving Maggie. And I think Missy Peregrim and the writers got together after the actress was pregnant off screen. They didn't show yeah. it, but I think she decided, okay, let's give me a cool arc for, you know, we, we all got to grow sometimes. So, you know, let's yeah. have these characters all essentially just, you know, keep having another dilemma where they have to crime solved differently they have to because mm -hmm. for a while she would kind of just be taking some of these uh doing a lot of hostage negotiations like okay well she doesn't we already got olivia benson on you know svu mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. Gorin, you know vincent d'onofre on criminal intent we don't she can be her own deal where she basically is just trying to instead of the billion who can i I'm save someone how about i just uh, just look out for everybody on the team and uh, yeah. just they, they made her be kind of more playful with her crime solving now which is like yes, that's kind of yes. cool yeah that's great I, um, I think she's playing a awesome role I love how she's she's um you know she's friend with everyone you know and I could see like her her um she I think she could also be a profiler <laughs> if you ask me He's good at that. Mm -hmm. And like you said, the negotiation. Yeah. Maybe we could see more of her in the future doing that. I would hope. Because, I mean, they they kind of exhausted all the bank robbery stuff, and they knew it. So they they keep it very sparingly now. Now it's more just kind of more up-to-date stuff, like Bitcoin and cyber yeah. hacking, theft, and uh, just even – you know, just activists, I think, is always a good starting point. And you know an episode is going to get explosive, literally. Because, yeah. you know, it's like, those are always heated issues. And Yeah, there's a lot of bombing episodes. I mean, talk about the pilot. I think the pilot had, like, four or five bombing. Yeah, you open up <laughs> yeah. with a, a politician who's behind a uh, current yeah. bombing to increase his ratings and it's like man it was crazy <laughs> diabolical it was, crazy. was it that was aimed crazy. at andrew cuomo what, what was that aimed at? <laughs> oh, oh, no I, I forgot his name and he was the same guy who was in svu as that crooked and, serial killer yes, representing himself over with dallas Chicago roberts TV. is the actor oh yeah. my god that was crazy that was a very intense crossover he's been playing a lot of creeps both on movies and guest starring on shows and he just has that face where he could be your yeah. best friend or he could be the most you know the biggest career criminal yep. yeah <laughs> but with the i realized that um most of the wolf entertainment cast they each are almost had an episode in svu Everyone gets started in SVU. Almost, right. like almost everyone. Almost, yeah. Um, almost, a lot of them. They're not far away. <laughs> totally. Um, so, um, uh, so if you had to choose just one character, <laughs> oh my! God. Who's going to okay. be on your desktop or wallpaper? <laughs> oh my God! I'm about to up myself right now. <laughs> There's a lot of likable ones, just like on these Law and Order ones that everyone generally oh likes. Oh my God! 
So for my com okay for my desktop it's um it's of course it's Maggie and OA. <laughs> it is it is a photo of Maggie and OA for the um I think it's the season four premiere um shoot I think yeah so I have them as my laptop from back um wallpaper. Very nice. Um, they don't really do too much advertisement of the computer companies. I noticed too. I maybe saw like a few Cisco's, maybe a few Apple's or Microsoft. Right? But no, very they sparingly. Don't. Not much in advertising, which is interesting. No. Yes, because in if you, I think Apple is. I see Apple everywhere. Yeah, totally. Apple. Yeah, Apple everywhere. Maybe a Linux in an earlier season. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. pretty sparse on the computers. No, they it would be that. funny though if they got Joel De La Fonte's uh, computer tech guy from SVU over there one time as a freelancer. <laughs> really? Oh, okay. It'd be really? funny if they did that. They haven't, but um, it'd be funny. Right. Um. Yeah. No, I think the show still got some life in it. I'd give each of them maybe five more seasons, and then just say, you know, again, you know, they don't have Could to last too long. Could we repeat that? Yeah, I can hear you. I can yeah, hear what you. Were you saying? Oh, you can. Oh, we lost communication. Uh, I was just saying. I, I think all these shows got at least maybe five more seasons in them, and then I think that would be a good ending point. I don't think they need to go on endlessly. Well, <laughs> oh my god! I, I I want I want FBI and most want it to like go on for like I don't know. And it, I want it to go on. Okay, I I think some I mean, of them that, have stronger I mean, ones. I mean, the cool shows, they, I mean, they have been running, I think Chicago is at their 10th season? Uh, with Fire, Fire? yes, and yes, Fire PD is, is one season? season away, so yeah, I, I think PD can end with basically, you know, Voight going to jail, or yeah. someone else shuts down the unit, and that's it, and, and that's it. the rest move on to a better police squadron, uh, but yeah, I mean... It is kind of interesting how Fire seems to be the mature of the two and Chicago Med is a like it or hate it. And much like these, I mean, I do like how everyone chooses which one they do or don't like. There's some who prefer the original FBI and there's others who think most want is edgier. And then yeah. we got a few so, other um, pals who well, thought um, International was kind of the better, best of them. So it is interesting just seeing all those mm -hmm. compare and contrast because either way you basically win. <laughs> well, that's true. But but for me, I I I prefer FBI, the original, then Most Wanted, and then International. Mm -hmm. But a lot of persons like the fandom, Twitter fandom, a lot of them like Most Wanted because they love that family dynamic that they get from the show. Yeah, FBI is not like that because we and we know little to nothing about any of the characters. I mean, we know some, but. Uh. I think it's just, I like their persona more and their manhunts. I just know I'm going to be emotionally drained after a cool long in chase. And then Jess yeah. or at least one, one of the three others are going to have some interesting just personal event. But I, I'm with you. I, I do think FBI has slowly gotten more and more personal. Uh, mm -hmm. International was probably the only of the three that got the most personal because oh my god instantly we know these guess. agents are sleeping with each other and was, one of them is injured oh my god because i watched it i watched it live and i live tweet i was shook it to the core <laughs> when i saw when i saw um jv in his bed i was like what i mean yeah. the first episode oh wow very first oh, get right to it baby <laughs> It was crazy. I was not expecting that at all. So I guess that is what it does better. It does go to the unexpected more often than not. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's big wolf. I mean, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, so you're part of the FBI fam hashtag on Twitter. Um, it's very interesting seeing how that's been building up on social media. <laughs> I mean, it is. Much like when Chicago. 
I mean, I'm well. I'm I'm actually I'm multi I'm a multi fandom if you ask me because I see I I basically live tweet like every night. Oh, nice. Night. Yeah, but I, you cannot miss two. You you cannot miss a Tuesday. I mean, I might miss some days, but I cannot miss Tuesday. I have to live. Tuesday yeah, I'm Tuesday. with you. I I have my a digital video recorder, so I'm always set in the DVR. But it's very interesting how. Sometimes I choose to, you know, watch it live or the day mm-hmm. after, and other times I just go right into it. Like I wait to even just uh, marathon. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no! I like to watch them as quick as possible. And then I didn't even know live tweeting existed existed until like three years ago, <laughs> three or four years ago. Oh, good. I mean, yeah. But it's it, fun. It's fun. You get to interact with a lot of people and um, other persons and hear their opinions and all those things. Yeah, because it kind of seemed like it was a casual thing at first, and then the fandom was just building out right away. They were embracing it on social media. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Especially on Instagram. They would have so many funny behind-the-scenes kind of photos. It wasn't single-minded or anything. They they really put a lot of effort into it, and it's like, it's so cool. I love I wish if you got DVDs, is there a blooper reel I should know about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but the um, the Twitter the Twitter FBI fandom they're they're awesome. I mean, we have people from all over the world, from all over the world. They're really nice, really polite. It's just like yeah, this is what you need with your fandom. You, it can't keep being toxic like it's been with Star Wars or Halloween. It's got to be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, and some people ship. Might get OA, so people do, but everybody respect each other, you know. Everybody respect each other. My, for me personally, I don't want them to be together. Yeah, I did not know that was becoming a thing, but it does seem like everybody's got something where it's like, will they or won't they? And yeah, I feel like it'll be much like I, I think. That's a good contrast. It's going to be much like Stabler and Vincent, where it's never oh going to happen. Don't but get you started been, with that. The, to me, they're like a mini. Olivia they and even Benji. said it. Both, yeah, they've been more. Why not one of them leaving for ten years? We cannot have that. Like we cannot have that. <laughs> well, exactly, and I mean, they've even said it multiple times. We'll never be able to be together. We've tried it. Will no. never work. And yet, exactly. it's like the forbidden romance that. It's kind of like Everybody Game of Thrones and Breaking Bad. You can't tell who's just uh, doing that just to stir up a random Twitter war or who's just <laughs> making it up, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. It's, it's, it's like, it's, give it a rest, guys. Not For me, I want them. I want them to, like, I want them to be engaged. That's it. Olivia and... Or just be casual boyfriend and girlfriend or just roommates, you know? It can be like the Chicago shows where Kelly you know, splits the rent with someone or... With Stella. Oh, my God. And then I heard that she might leave. We don't know. She said she's not sure. Oh, with Chicago, with Stella. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, my God. I don't think there's a stable... I don't think there's a stable relationship in the Dick Booth world. The only stable relationship is between Herman and his wife and probably between Mouch and Slack. We we don't even see them that often. That's a good point. Yeah, because, I mean, life is that way. And so it echoes life. Life is never stable. Life, you find that you got to one day, you know, bail on the rent or move back in into a different house or quit your job that you've been working your ass off at and that you've found that you're not valued at and it's not worth the time and pain or that your kid's progression is more important. You know, people need a wake up call. And I think that's what keeps people coming back to these shows because they see a little bit of them in these mm-hmm. yeah but um Rollins and Carisi they're coming I like them I want oh them yeah to- that that was in the bag it's so funny how they hinted at that for like three years and then yes, it finally it happened and crazy. everyone was like oh it paid oh, off yeah, what's so yeah. funny is my sister <laughs> missed that she saw most of that episode in which that happened on Law and Order SVU oh, wow. and then I was, I was she saw the I recap was- She's like, what did I miss? I'm like, that was a <laughs> wedding that Stabler and that Finn was having and canceled. Oh. Oh. I mean, I love I love them. And then they start up this thing with Casey and Brett. I mean, they started up and then they just pulled them apart. Oh my God. 
Yeah, Casey on Chicago Fire was kind of a thing. It was going to keep being because he's just – he kept coming – Kelly was always out of his shell and would just fess up mm-hmm. to relationships that weren't working, and Casey was kind of mm-hmm. the opposite. He took a while yeah. to embrace his personal life, and then mm-hmm. it just kind of became apparent. It's like, well, when people move apart, you know, there's no way he's going to be able to be loyal to Gabe after all. He's going to have to say, yeah, we're no longer boyfriend or girlfriend anymore. Oh, wow. <laughs> I oh, live wow. in a different city. I live here. It's yeah. it's, just not, it, it's the it's reality. Good. Guys get yeah, lonely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then Stella is still in Boston. Is that Boston they think? I think they say she's in our New York. I, I'm not to that point yet, but I, I think that is the case from what I heard. And it is kind of funny how how they expose a lot of this news. is like, some of them are very blunt and others will just say spoiler warning and they'll just say so-and-so is leaving. But it is interesting how sometimes they're very quiet on it. Sometimes it just means, oh, that, you know, the character's coming back, but they're just keeping you in wait. And other times it's like, no, for real, the the actor is exiting. So they are wrapping the storyline up. (laughs) Oh my God. I don't know. So there's, there's, there's some, so their their relationship part is on the rocks as well, Kelly and, and Stella, because like well, you haven't watched their last episode, but I think he was wondering if she's coming back or something of that sort. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm cool know. with anyone leaving because I know it'll feel way more natural versus some of these others where it's just like, you know, when yeah. anyone was leaving CSI or some of those other shows it never felt too natural really like like with current ncis which we'll actually be talking about later um i thought they did a good job of having mark Harmon depart and replacing him with gary cole because it was just inevitable it's just like but i i i used to watch ncis ncis with viva and sasha alexander so i think after anything after season 12 i have no idea what it's about no it's all good it's it's been hard to follow. I'm surprised that that show out of all of them has been on and my late grandmother was into it. And uh-huh. so I kind of feel like I'm her watching looking glass. I'm her oh, watching wow. eyes to it for her. I'm like, Oh, I would lo- love to tell her about what happened, but I can't. You know. But I heard, I heard that Mark is leaving. So I don't know. Is the show going to be? He's uh, still credited and he might occasionally guest star, but they, they did give him a farewell, but, I think much like Ducky, he'll appear in like three episodes each season from this point on and just be credited oh, for the rest. Okay, so Ducky still appear in episodes? Yes, Ducky is still on there. He's credited every episode, but he always appears in like five each season. So Oh wow. I, so I think they've done a good that. job of mentioning everybody and acknowledging them. Sometimes I mean they still in acknowledge Tony the Nozo even though he's not on there you know yeah I heard he left long time but I, I think it was last month I I knew that Tony and he's Gina definitely coming back I had no <laughs> idea they had a kid together they're keeping it very secret and that's yeah. just yeah but I know group. I didn't know they had a kid together Ziva and Tony I heard I found out like it is kind of funny. I was slow on it too and I had the treat of just binge watching all non-stop on paramount plus back when it was called just cbs plus <laughs> oh wow and so i'm i'm clueless to what's going on, on in so CIA. for those who want to watch this or stream it or have and have given up cable um i guess you can buy the dvds dirt cheap at a discount sale uh-huh. if not you can probably sign up for a paramount plus thing and you'll be instantly into it and stream away you'll these really are easy addiction guys these are just like Again, I mean, I mean, I'm watching so much. I don't think I can watch another show. I'm watching so many shows. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh yeah, and I'm the same way. Like, my, someone will recommend me a show, and I will always be very blunt with them, saying, "I do honor your opinion. I do want to see that, but I, you know, yeah. When, when we're doing these podcast episodes based off what popular stuff we've seen, it's like I got to squeeze in this. It takes this X amount of hours and weeks. So (laughs) I'm going to have to get to this. Maybe give me two months. I'll get back to you on that. Yes, two months. (laughs) Probably even four months because I'm watching so much. (laughs) Oh, totally. And same thing with movies. It's like, if we're going to do a movie franchise, I need a time to actually, you know, find the, 
every movie seems to have like a director's cut or special edition nowadays so like well now i need extra time to see the superior you know cut of the movie so right yeah if, it, if this blu-ray yeah. is very expensive that's going to take a while so true, let's true that. you know and then we even have to see if we even want to talk about it and if you can be constructive on it so that's the other thing too you know like don't do the episode if you feel like it's going to be a rant or just something's going to get blown out of proportion you know? <laughs> right 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 so this has been a delight having you on here um Thank you. Anything Thank you, you want to promote on social media or follow, please let us know. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, well, I'm, I'm mostly on Twitter. I mean, my app is at official underscore Gen Z, J-E-N-Z-I-I. -I. All right, cool. Yeah. It's been great having one of many fans on here. It's been great. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> it was awesome. Socially distanced fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll return after these messages. Hey, feeling down? Feeling low? Not enough podcasts about movies in your life? Why not try... They must be destroyed on sight! The new Podcast Cure-All. Sure to get you right with the world and on a path to better living. We have exploitation, we have Italian horror, we have zombies, we have slashers, we have crime films, we have spaghetti westerns, we even have sci-fi and sex comedies. So take a dose of... They must be destroyed on sight! As needed, and let the hosts, Lee Russell, Daniel Harper, Paul Romali, and the odd guest host, Cure What Ails Ya. Warning, may cause atrophy, African consumption, black fever, bone shave, chin puff, colic, cramp colic, Dropsy of the brain, elephantitis, grocer's itch, jaundice, mania, miasma, mortification, palsy, pox disease, rheumatism, scurvy, St. Anthony's fire, summer complaint, and worm fit in some people. Consult a physician before listening. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Oh, necrophilia. Oh, God. Oh. It's a dead issue, man. Don't, don't push it. Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, crude. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most serious of senses, disappointed in you. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of here. unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this one. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you shouldn't be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this, like, little nerd glee with everything that kept Little history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you, you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped watching this shit at 12 years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was How did you watch movie. this shit at 12? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. Hey, everybody. I'm Corey. And I'm Zach. And we're the hosts of Podcasting After Dark, a cast dedicated to late-night horror and sci-fi of the 80s and 90s, often found on HBO and Cinemax. You know, the movies your parents didn't want you watching as a kid. You can find us every other week on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, and Stitcher. This is what you want. This is what you get. It's time, let's check our cue, baby. Pair it with a couple of brews, baby. We love your movies. We love the bad ones too. So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you. Oh yeah. Ban out, ban out, ban out, ban out. Ban out, ban out, ban out, ban out. Everything I learned from movies Helps to make life a little bit groovy With a one life plot holes are gratuitous boobies It's time to get busy With your friend Steve and Izzy At eilfm.podbean.com 
Welcome to Who Was She podcast. I'm your host, Tara Jabari. After a decade working in documentaries, marketing, and all things digital media, I found that podcasting is a strong medium to share stories. After years of producing for others, I decided to start my own biographical podcast. Who Was She will focus on the life of a woman throughout Baha'i history. The first season is about Lydia Zeminoff. Lydia's story explores the subjects of the power of language and faith. Her father invented the universal language Esperanto, and she came from a Jewish family and became a Baha'i. She grew up during World War I and was killed during World War II in a concentration camp, despite heroic efforts to save her life. How can one person's life intersect with so many others, connect across borders, and inspire a biography which inspired this podcast? Over the next few weeks, I will share her story with you and the lives that were most affected by her and those who affected her life as well. They include her father, Ludwig Semenov, her spiritual mother, American journalist Martha Root, and the Baha'i German soldier Fritz Mako, who worked for the resistance undercover while having to serve the Nazi party. I want to thank the author Wendy Heller and George Ronald Publishing for their blessing to let me use Heller's biography, Lydia, The Life of Lydia Zeminoff, Daughter of Esperanto, as a main and instrumental resource for this podcast. So please subscribe and learn about this amazing woman who traveled through three continents in an effort to bring unity through the power of language. You can also find more information on our Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest at Who Was She Podcast. Music was composed and performed by Sam Red. I am your host, Tara Jabari. Join us next time as we begin our journey about Lydia Zeminoff. Are you sick of the same old stale podcasts? Well, then join Vanessa and Darren as they dissect movies of all kinds. The two lifelong cinema lovers bring their favorites curiosities and first-time watches to the operating table and inject them with a healthy dose of snark. Then there's the waiting room where they examine books and short stories. So just look for them on Apple Podcasts and where fine podcasts are available. They're part of the Legion Podcast Network. Follow them on Twitter at VD Clinic Pod. Join them on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash VD Clinic Pod. Or email them at VD Clinic Pod at gmail.com. They're ready to cure what ails you. <laughs> and still, they just might be a little contagious. Hi there, it's Heather from the Watching Netflix Without You podcast. Did you know that there are over 1,200 Netflix original feature films and documentaries? And that number is only growing. So I've made it my mission to watch as many as I possibly can. Then with a delightful guest or guests, disclaimer, more often than not my brother Ryan, We spend an episode rating, reviewing, and discussing a film at length. The first half of every episode is spoiler-free for those who haven't seen it yet. And in the second half, after a very clear spoiler warning, we dive into it. And that's really about it. You can listen to Watching Netflix Without You on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and more. Now continue with our program. Follow 
us on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a